Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Welcome to your day off. My name is Corey. And of course, well, actually, I'm not. I'm, I'm sitting here at Premier Orlando, and I'm missing out on my boy today because uh, he's in uh, he's in Iceland. So if anybody wants to like email him or text him and just tell him he should be here and he shouldn't be in Iceland, he should be with his best friend. Uh, that would be very very cool. But so um, what the plan is for this weekend at Premier is that we're going to do a bunch of roundtable conversations. So um, we've brought in some of um, some of our friends from past podcast and um, just just people that we love to hang out with so they're gonna um we're, like i said we're gonna kind of do like round table um conversation today um i'm really excited to uh, to work with uh mr christopher benson because he always brings the shit at these shows and we're always uh look forward to seeing you chris man welcome thank you always a pleasure always a pleasure how are you how, how does tony's seat feel uh it more than comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Tony, if you're listening in, I know you're listening uh, in. Chris, uh, more than comfortable. <laughs> Chris says Might that you're not going to get your seat back, so uh, you guys have got the wrestler. You have to like. You, you, well, you know, he, he can promise take you. over the main stage. He can take that. <laughs> we'll switch for a weekend. Oh my god, that would be the dopest thing ever. Well, be, uh, listen, I can't wait till the team's ready to like next year. I'm telling you, they're going to take it over. I'm going to sit in the audience and watch. That's what's up. You've been sitting there for a couple years, though, Chris. Well, we're finally getting them to a point of ready to go. So that's awesome. Time. What's going on this weekend? Uh, we got main stage going on. We have a photo shoot that's going to be going on on the show floor, just to really elevate what's going on in the industry and just try and give people insight on how we approach stuff and to share knowledge. I think is the biggest thing, and as many places we can shine a light on people as well. And so we're going to do an underground event, which will be super cool. We have forty artists coming. Uh, Whoa. Yeah, so that's like every artist here then. <laughs> I lot. mean, honestly, it's just, and it's cool because we started with some really cool local uh, people being here in Orlando, and we'll start with them uh, being community first and base it right here, and we start with that and build it up to what we call our legends and icons and our amazing educators who support the industry. So, is it going to be more like a presentation thing or more like a uh, like an actual education event? Uh, no, I'd a lot say of more, teaching more, or just like no, show? more more show definitely that's more awesome. show. That's awesome. <laughs> just, uh, I mean, if anybody knows what we do, we def- we wrap a pretty wild production, and we definitely went all out for this one with the people coming in. I think just out of respect, we want to give them an amazing creative space to just go for it. I think it's really cool where the industry is right now because, um, and we talked about this a couple of years ago because you actually you you actually went up with Sam during during. Yeah. Uh, here at premiere during COVID, it was, it's it's just kind of it's kind of cool to kind of watch like it's about it's back to the industry it's about it's back to the hairstylist and it's a back less a little bit less industry and more hairdressers and it's kind of really it's really cool to watch people stand on stage together from you know different brands or whatever and it, that's not what's being you know elevated it's actually the the art artistry and the the um, the artists that are being uh, elevated yeah I think there's I think there's definitely a change that's happening I think the the artists are definitely valuing what they do and how they do it and who they do it with. And I think they should. And I think that, you know, there's nothing wrong. It's great working with brands. It's how you work with them and it's how they work back with you. And I think it's got to be something that works in synergy together and it can be a beautiful thing, but you don't always have to work for the brand to work with a brand. And I think there's a lot of ways to go about it. So that's very well said. So, um, so uh, again, uh, we're we're at premiere, and um, and you know, I, I we brought Chris in to talk to, but really we brought Chris in just so we could talk to some of his friends. So uh, <laughs> Chris is always, as he said before, he's got the coolest friends in the industry, and um, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 our guest today, I'm I'm, I'm particularly excited to chat with mm-hmm. um, uh, our, our guest. Oh, I'm going to mess it up again, Ira. Pope. Pope, Pope says, Sage. got it. No, I didn't. <laughs> Thanks for the assist there. Uh, uh, Ira, uh, Ira Pope Sage is here, and um, I, I got to watch him work. I've, I've been following him on Instagram, but I actually got to watch him work a little bit in Chicago. And, like, he's just he's just such a great educator, such a delight to be in the room with. And, you know, thank you for that, Ira, first off. That. But, but dude, welcome to your day off. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you, thank you. How did uh, how'd you guys meet? 
uh, I think, I mean, we've chased each other around the world at <laughs> different yeah. standpoints, and I think it's just a mutual respect for seeing what each other did. And I think as CBC came about, it just got time to start asking some of these artists to come and do it on a bigger level, unbranded about the art and create space that we can do it together. And it doesn't have to be for a brand, but again, brands I think can be involved and support it and support the art. So I think it's just how it's set up and how everybody knows it's you know going to be taken care of, look after the artists that are coming in. And so uh, we'd collab with DJ and, you know, Ira is always somebody that I've respected and what his craft is. Um, and I think the beautiful thing was, is I've, always known him he's always been great but when we got him in the back room just the energy and who, yeah. he, who he is and the way he uh presents himself uh, my team just uh fell in love with him so he can't, awesome. he can't get away from us now oh you're, <laughs> you're, stu you're stuck bro i like it it's <laughs> yeah. good to be stuck at <laughs> hey, that, yeah. you're stuck that's so cool what um where, where are you from ira from michigan born in the philip or made in the philippines born in michigan <laughs> All right, made in the Philippines. All yes. right, you can't you can't throw that out there. Well, my my father military. Uh huh. Uh, so nope. that's where that happened. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that's where that seed was dropped. <laughs> apparently there, Literally. and uh, yeah, so made there and then born here. So where where um where in Michigan? Uh, Grand Rapids area, Greenville technically, but Grand nice. Rapids area. Nice. I don't like. We have so many artists from from Michigan, you know. And then are you li you live in Michigan now? I live in Las Vegas now. Ooh. I moved to Las Vegas in nineteen ninety nine. 1999. Yep. To join the Robert Cromian Sloan team. Oh, that's so awesome. We love Robert, man. Are you yeah. still there, Robert Cromian? So I was with them and that and Paul Mitchell, that crew, until 2012, 2013, uh -huh. and then uh, went independent from there. And then are you like in a studio suite? Uh, so now I am, yes, in a booth rent, basically. Yep. So not studio, I'm in open space, basically. Right. And then does... Does Kelly have a salon there too, or is it just Robert? Or did Kelly, Kelly Cardenas? Cardenas, he yeah. He did before. Um, he did before. He no longer does. I believe last I heard Kelly sold all of his salons, minus the one salon that they have in Carlsbad that is like a live-in workspace. Right. Um, and I think he's just doing uh, motivational speaking stuff now. Yeah, I think I think I I read that he's out of the industry completely. I just wasn't sure if, if they still had his name on it or anything like that. I think he sold all... So there. all of it, I think. I know, I know Brooklyn's still doing some stuff with, with Paul, Paul Mitchell, Mitchell as well, right? Yep. And I think that's why they keep that space, that living workspace there in Carlsbad right. for Brooklyn, basically. That makes sense. Yep. And have you worked with DJ before? Yes. Oh, we yes. had him on the podcast last year. Dude. We had a blast. Yes, he's a good guy. Because yeah. he worked with he's, DJ. He's, he's, <laughs> he's, a, uh, he's actually my best friend. Exactly. So we, oh, yeah, really? we really work and play a lot. Yeah. yeah, we've all the kinds of plays you can think of nice. uh, that uh, <laughs> you could do healthy, wise, or not healthy, guys. we've done, basically. It's... It's a good experience to have that friendship for sure. That's so cool. I love DJ man. And yeah, okay. actually, Chris, you introduced us to him last year yep. as well, right here. Yep. Right in, well, not in this room. This dude, they put us out in this room. It's out here. <laughs> it's far. <laughs> I mean, we're taking Uber. You know, <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> I'm like, am I still going the right way? <laughs> Electric scooters, Uber. <laughs> yeah. Could have been a couple. Planes, trains, and planes, automobiles. Trains, automobiles. Get there. Crumb, <laughs> crumbs back, so you know which way to go back. Right? <laughs> oh my god, it's so crazy. Where, where? So did so did you come up with like Robert and like that philosophy? So, I'm trying to just like get nope. to where like what the philosophy is. Of so for me, come up wise, um, I started cutting my own hair when I was 13. Mm -hmm. I'd go to a salon when I was a younger kid and ask the. Uh, beautiful hairdresser girl for a haircut and i wanted at that point the white skater kid look yeah um so like long bangs and spiky on the part and uh it would never quite turn out the way i wanted but she'd be a beautiful girl she asked me if i liked it and, I smiled, uh, <laughs> Thank you, beautiful girl. and then go home and cut into myself and uh after about the third time of doing that i decided to start cutting my hair from the beginning to the end myself and uh then i moved from being in the white kid skater look into more black kid cool shapes and Bobby Brown Gumby haircuts and yeah. Johnny Gill by levels, all that kind of stuff, and putting graffiti into my head, like football helmet with my number in it and the jump sign and the Nike symbol, and I would just two-side tape on. Whoa, whoa, uh, whoa, whoa. You were doing this on yourself? On myself. But I would draw it on a piece of paper that wasn't uh, as almost like a business card. It wasn't as soft as paper. wasn't as hard as cardboard, like right. business card fa fabric. Two-side tape it, stick it on my head, stencil, <laughs> and cut all around it. See? It was so simple. So simple. <laughs> <laughs> then it comes up with so simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, back then it really, I don't know that I could do that today simply, but it was fearless and I didn't know any different then. So right. I just did it and I had a, the mirror set up where the, the two would open up this way and then one mirror on the door so I could see everything. And then also I'm very uh, 
uh, I got a lot of sensitive things and having hair clippings on my skin would drive me batty. So then I could just immediately shower right afterwards too. So that whole sensitivity was deleted with that as well. That's amazing. Did you do other art as well? Not really. I wouldn't really grow up much of a art kid. I was more of a jock kid more than an art kid really. Um, yeah, I, uh, didn't really have any forms of arts. I never, for a long time, I never considered myself much of a artist type hairdresser. Um, not until just maybe, maybe five, 10 years ago that I start to see that, okay, I guess I do have a sense of art in me. I thought I was kind of robotic for a long time. Um, but, uh, I realized, especially social media helped to show me that, okay, I guess I am different than some other hairdressers. And there is a, I appreciate what I do. And I know not everyone appreciates what I do, and I can definitely see and uh, watch if someone else reposts my stuff. Sometimes there's so much hatred towards my stuff that lets me know I'm definitely more on the art side. I'm definitely for uh, making me happy, number one, uh, making my client, whoever I'm working on, happy, number two, and that's it. Yep. Um, right. Two-thirds for me, one-third for them, and that's all I focus on, basically. So, uh, And in that, I'm looking to create like a character and a feeling which mm-hmm. as soon as it comes to feeling that exists in the art world. It is so shocking to me that you said that you didn't see you're not, you weren't art first because, because when you look at your page, that's all I see. Thank you. You know, that that's all I see. And then like, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by it and I'm blown away by like, I'll, it's hard to talk about with it. You can't actually see it, the visual, but, but like as, as elfy and as pixie-ish as it is like it all works so well to me and like the shape is there and the weight is there like like when you're when you're doing like those those inside shapes with the like especially like the long tentacle type stuff Mm -hmm. like to hold that shape all the way through is so difficult to do and to watch you do it i'm 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 blown away and admire it I, i mean all the words that you can say about it just the weight's perfect and like both Thank like you. vertically and horizontally perfect. It's, it's just amazing. Thank you. Uh, disconnection mm. makes yeah. a big difference on the big disconnection and uh, offsetting the head to be. What do you mean about to, offsetting the head? So offsetting it, basically putting the shortest lengths at mm-hmm. the widest area of the head. So off balancing that basically. And to be able to, and those specific ones that you're saying, I use more of a, um, in my world, I use more of a uh, at noon disconnection. So traditional disconnections in my world would be a below noon disconnection. The bottom is all short. The top is long. Mm-hmm. That makes the shape smaller. Above noon disconnection, the top is all short. The bottom is long. So that makes the shape elongated and longer. I use, um, on that fairy elf model that you're talking about there, mm-hmm. I use a at noon disconnection. So it's the mid area is shortest. The top is longer and the bottom is longer. So it becomes very flat-like in the back. And that's where that weight really holds itself. So the curvature of the head sits in there and fills right. in that. So it's very flat at the O bone. And then I fill in the nape area as well with longer disconnection. Well, I, I recommend everybody to go and look at his page because it's just the, the stuff he's doing is just like freakishly cool and freakishly good. You know, Thank and not you. just cool, but like really, really good too. Like it, it, it definitely gives it gives those good vibes. I appreciate no, it's that. It's technically just in, incredible the way he approaches hair and I think um, you, you have a couple of things I want to capitalize. You were fearless. I love that you said that because I think as we get into the industry, we are fearless and just will try anything. And I think yeah. that it's almost, you know, we go through this phase and then get back to it. And that's like the reflection I would give you is watching you over the years go through those phases of really technical, super craft, amazing at what you do. But now I see more of an artistry freedom. And just even to, when, when you said that about five, 10 years, and that's when I really noticed it of like you really putting an expression to your signature. And I could definitely tell a difference of when you would see, you know, other work and it, like when your stuff comes across, there's no question that's Iris. Thank you. Uh, music festivals mm. changed my whole perspective on a lot of things. Um, mm-hmm. I had a lot of, uh, I didn't even know that imposter syndrome existed, but most of the 2000s up until like 2000. 15 area, I would say. Mm-hmm. I was very uh, insecure on stage, always uh, feeling like I shouldn't be there and, and blah, 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 all the things. Um, and then DJ, DJ invited me to Coachella for the first time in 2010. And by 2015, I finally started to settle and realizing, looking at Coachella, every Coachella I'd go there and I knew I'd come home with something that would change my perspective, change my life on what I think of things. And uh, over time of it, I realized that Oftentimes it would be some band at 1.30 on Sunday that I didn't even see on the lineup because they're just this tiny little thing. 
and it's, I'm there for the big massive font and the headliner, right. but it's a tiny little thing at 1.30 that made me realize this is why I needed to be here. This is the love I needed, and uh, this just changed me. And I realized then that I don't need to be the headliner guy. I don't need to be the big fancy. I'm totally fine to be the little font at 1.30 and give all the love because those people are the ones that are it's so excited for them to be there. The big headliners go all over the place. It's not quite the same kind of – it's more often likely not the same kind of emotion for them as it is the 1.30 band on Sunday. Well, it's like it's just another day at the office for the big fonts. I think so. Right? I think so. Sometimes, at least I can sometimes feel that way as a person in the audience, which is, I'm sensitive to those things. But uh, yeah, those things, uh, I really like that true <clears throat> heart, just put it out there and uh, give them, you know, giving, giving it your all kind of thing. <clears throat> that's amazing that, to me that that's, that that was the inspiration to kind of uh, break out, a part of the inspiration, you know, part, just even that you can even hold on to just what so that was. so many different forms of artistry in that. You know, I mean, go to Coachella, you see DJs, you see uh, rock bands, you see hip hop, you see so many varieties of form of music, and you can see that all of this is under the umbrella of music, but it touches so many different people. Just the same as a hair show, mm -hmm. there can be so many different incredible educators, um, and they could all touch different levels of education different way. Um, and that's where I finally came comfortable with myself of realizing that I do, especially also with my clock cutting method that I put together, mm -hmm. um, that also helped me to feel, and I finally realized that, uh, the value that that has, I guess, it's a great um, word. and that's, uh, uh, given me, that's like my purpose of where I exist in my brain of purpose right now is to, I feel I have to, uh, show as many hairdressers as possible this clock cutting method because it's a very simple, simple approach for people to understand cutting hair. Um, and for me, I know that since I've had that in my own brain, my conversation with myself with whilst cutting hair is so much more comfortable now. I used to have a lot of uncomfortable conversation in my head, and uh, especially with the imposter syndrome slash even with just being in the salon with a client still having, like if the hair all of a sudden flipped and I didn't intend for it to flip, uh, it's so frustrating. Like, why is this flipping? And I didn't understand concave and convex properly yet. Right. Once I properly understood concave and convex, just like five years ago, well, then I finally now have pure comfort in my voice inside my head. I'm so much more calmed and relaxed. I don't feel like just a platform artist guy anymore. I'm like a, I'm much more comfortable being more of an educator guy than a platform artist guy. Um, and, uh, yeah, I have, I have much less, uh, uncomfortable voices or uh, heart rates that are anxiety filled like I used to. That's, that's beautiful, man. For real. It, 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 interesting on that too. Like I know that, that uh, a lot of people or a lot, a lot of, you know, artists that we've talked to, um, you know, they consider themselves educators and like once they be, they, once they found their education voice, that's when everything took over, mm -hmm. you know, that's when, that's when their star rose or whatever. And like, I mean, we have, we have friends that, you know, hate the word influence or hate the word like, you know, platform artist or whatever, because all they want to be is an educator. Now, what, whatever stage that is that they're, that they're educating on, you know, makes them an influence or makes them a, a, a platform artist, but sure. not getting into it for that, you know, and it reminds me kind of like, or how I kind of talk about it in my own head is like, like early in like in like the early 1990s, we had a lot of like our Turry brothers kind of like yeah, just on the platform, yeah. but like, but what are we getting as, as a, as a, as an attendee, I guess is the best mm -hmm. way or being in the audience. Like it was like, Oh yeah, that's kind of neat. Especially being a young hairdresser or watching them, you know, slice, people's, you know, mm -hmm. slice eyebrows off on <laughs> and stuff like that. But, um, but, uh, it, it's, it, it, the industry's changed a lot in that, in that there's, um, there, there's education that comes around with it as well. You know? Yeah. I think uh, it's gotten to a point where we had great flair, and then it got to a point where we needed to balance it with some technical. And I think it got super technical, super like it almost became the education class started to go to main stage. And I think that main stage should be inspiring and it should be, you know, production. It should be fire. It should be, you know, seeing people jam together and create art together. And then in the classrooms is where you can really drive those messages um, and what, what people can take back to the salon in such a great, and I think both have such great value because I remember seeing those shows and, you know, seeing you with Robert and doing the shows and just being inspired by the edge that was mm -hmm. ridden. And for me, that was super important to see of what could be pushed to the envelope because then it makes you go, what can I do? Not copy, but what can I do at a different space and time? Um, 
and create that space for others to do that. And I think that's the the whole mission for what Ira does with what he does. And, you know, I coming up with his own method, I think out of necessity for you to have that conversation outward and inward, I think is super powerful. And then what that brings to the industry, um, we need more people like that that will take a chance on themselves and believe in themselves, um, but also be supported by the people around them. And I think and that that's, that's why huge, I'm so fortunate that right? I do have support of so many people yeah. um, and anyone that has op- had the opportunity to see my method. They're like, oh, OK, that's a lot more. It's not so hokey pokey or kind of a uh, gimmicky than what a lot of people may think it were without knowing at first. Um, and then it wants to hear, OK, that's pretty solid stuff. And um, it's straightforward. <clears throat> like it's it's very straightforward. And I think but if you. If anybody had it, just the visual of what you do, there's no question there's an incredible technical aspect of what it is. You can't not look at that and go, damn. Yeah, there's no question, that. bro. Thank there's you. Honestly, and the freedom that you, you go with now, I think is so beautiful because you do have that balance of, you know, just insane textures inside of what's going on. Um, but there's still just that craftsman. And you just you just don't see a ton of that happening. And it's beautiful to see it happen. I think that's the best word for it, right? Like just the craft and the craft, yeah. you being a craftsman of it. It's like, it, it, it is kind of, it's like, a, it's like when you watch someone like make a beautiful tabletop or like, I don't know about you guys, but like if I'm on Instagram or something, like if somebody's like, you ever get stuck on those videos of like old, like lighters or, or old rusty things that people put back together? <laughs> I I'm not freaked out, <laughs> dude. It's not just lighters; it's anything. Uh-huh. It, it'll be like, I don't know, and usually metal because they kind of work with it. They right. clean and they restore, yeah, it yeah, and yeah. you're like, what the, you know? And then yeah. that comes back to me as like of, of of this craft of how to do it. And and this was most of these products were made prior to like even that that artist was right. alive. You know what yeah. I mean? Like or old guns, old like handguns yeah. and stuff. And I'm like, I'm blown away by by just that craft, you know? Mm-hmm. And like and and I think that that's why that's why it resonates with me to watch your work. Cause I think if you were to just, if, if you're not a hairstylist, I guess, and you're just looking at it from the outside, I think it looks wild. It looks crazy. I'm sure that's some of the responses that you've gotten that you get on social media about mm-hmm. it. But, but, but if you understand hairdressing and you've been around it for a minute, you go, damn, that's like, that's solid shit there, man. I you know? That. And like, and, and I think that's what I was going to back even about like how perfect the weight is situated on the hair. I mean, that's done with craft. That's not done with an artistic eye. You know, that's done with, like, knowing what the F you're doing. Correct. You know? yeah. Having Correct. a relationship with the head shape. Exactly. A lot. Yep. And the person. Yeah, you know? for sure. And I watch knowing you very much them. cut to them is very much when I watch you do your stuff on social. I mean, it's you can just see. You look at their face. You look at what's going on. You break it down. Um, and you can see it. I mean, if you can see it over social, you can imagine what the classes are in, in person. And yeah. you can see the response. <laughs> with all these crazy haircuts that I do, I have very few tears. Oh. It's a it's a very open conversation ahead of time. It's very clear. Has to be right. Yeah. Has to be. Yeah. You're going to go down that line, yep. right? Exactly. The, the tears <laughs> are from all of us other hairdressers <laughs> that are watching you do it. Golly, man, how do you how do you right? work this out, man? And I've been yeah. to plenty of hair shows where people were doing haircuts not quite as extreme as me, but they but had having tears. That, yeah, yeah. They didn't yeah. have that proper relationship, that proper communication oh. with them. They weren't as uh, humanly connected. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we see that all the time, right? Yeah. Like, like we. I, I think it's a disservice to have these models come in and then like you so know blast their hair out yep. without even with, without the without that conversation, right? right. Like Correct. that's that's kind of like I guess that that's kind of where I was with the Arturi brothers. Like nobody agreed to this. Yeah, you can definitely get that feeling sometimes. <laughs> you know, like nobody yeah. agreed to this, and that and that just kind of feels gross to me um, as an industry. And I think it's one of those things that that we need to do that we should do better. But um, but I think we're kind of getting there because I'm definitely seeing like. And you guys are going to disagree, but it, that's okay. But I definitely see like like that that ego from ten years that that was so dominant in our industry. I kind of see that moving on. I think that there's, I think that because of the craft and because of of of, of, of there's so many artists in the space now. I think that I don't know necessarily if that that, that those big over the top egos, the egos bigger than the talent. I don't think we're seeing that quite as much. I think that people I would are being actually agree with you. I think personally. Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't think that. Aside from Chris's ego. I don't think it's <laughs> just terribly huge. Um, <laughs> no, I think it I think it just doesn't exist because I think the vibration of what we hold is humility. I think, you know, the true masters of what's going on at the craft don't even call themselves masters because they're always learning. Yeah. And I think that um, it's approached different and then, you know, not good, bad, or indifferent, but it's like I see on social media 
you know, two years out of the business. I'm a master colorist and, and you can put anything, you can write anything, you can put anything. And, um, I mean, my teachers would have crushed me for writing or putting something like that or calling yourself something <laughs> right. like that. Right. So if we kind of came in that same era of like, you better be really good at what you're going to do. You better be humble about how you go about it. Um, but I think there comes a point where you also have to be confident and go, what do I have to share? And I think that's where the industry is, is, um, humbly with each other. And I don't think it's, uh, the idea of pitting, you know, I don't think that ever really existed with artists. I think it was more some of that shit existed with brands, <clears throat> and you can't work with so and so, and you can't work with so and so. Yeah, you know, do you, the, that's our not our tribe. But, ho- but hold on, Chris, hold on, hold on, hold on, because like we had, you know, again, I'm going back to like probably like early alts or like you know late '90s and stuff. But you know, we had four major brands in the mm. industry, and you were a part of that, you know. No. But and within those four brands, we only had four spaces. Mm. There was only four artists that were working that were touring. I mean, I mean, this is no shade, by the yeah. way, but just yep. as an example, like like I would go to I would go to an Oella event. It was always the Doves that were up there of representing course. it, and that's no shade at all. Sure. It's just where the industry was, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. Sam was always representing for Redkin. That was where it was. So so everybody that's fighting for a position or everybody that's fighting for that spotlight, it can get ugly. And by the way. And with my experience, and Chris, you've been in this, you've been, you've been, you've been in that space longer than I have. It's never the guys that are standing on top that had the attitude. It was always the ones fighting to get there mm. that, that we always got. That, that, that you always get like, oh, why are you being shitty? And marketing. <laughs> <laughs> or the sun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I'm not touching that wow. one. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Anyway, yeah, yeah let's back up. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, baby. <laughs> but but uh, but that's that. You know, there, there was. I think that there was a lot of that tension and stuff because. But now, you know, like like Andy Warhol said, everybody's getting their fifteen minutes. You know, and and I think you know, not everybody need that. Not everybody deserves that. 15, not deserves. That's the wrong word. But not everybody excels in that fifteen minutes. Or can minutes. fill that. 15 or can fill minutes. that fifteen Correct. minutes. Yeah, 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 I, I think you can't it. fill that fifteen minutes. Well, yeah. I think credibility. I think what you know, the new black for me is credibility, authenticity transparency everybody's had shit everybody's had a bad day it's how you pick yourself up it's what you do with it it's how you can share it with somebody it's what you can save time with um i think when people can have that connection like what you talk about Ira, that human connection um for me that was what resonates in reality to people and that's why i think things go well for those that choose to do it that way instead of trying to be the ego mania i just don't see that is resonating in our industry right now and i'm not saying there's not people with egos you have to have an ego to do this sure. in some senses you have to but it's what you do with that ego it's can you be humble enough to go i, I want you to come <laughs> to fill the spot on the stage that we have and you cut instead of me cutting and i'll host and you yeah. know to have that humility Just try of, to put black on ira yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's black and white whatever it is <laughs> take your color off bro yeah. the artist Excuse formerly me, knows this could turn into a totally sad face <laughs> <laughs> it's black and white <laughs> I'll get it someday oh my god but I think uh, for a positive side of social media yeah. I think social media has actually deleted a lot of the egos correct because I agree even completely. Even though social media yeah. isn't all truth, you still get to see truth of what that person can or can't do. Correct. Mm. And now we all know that, okay, that person swings regularly. It's not just this weekend. And maybe you do a hair show and you don't do a great haircut. And it's not, oh, that person sucks because you see them regularly doing great haircuts or right. great colors. Um, so, and you see people from all over the world doing incredible haircuts. So I think that definitely uh, puts a little bit more modesty. Mm-hmm. into people's mindsets well, I, that, that's where i was i, I was going to go with like i didn't realize until social media really took off i didn't realize how many killers there were across, were the across this There's country so many. right like shit yeah. like and who's, who's world, this ira dude around you know the what world I mean? I mean there's amazing talent in the u.s and and but globally as well there's and i think social media shines mm-hmm. uh you know that and i think there is definitely a of a modesty because you see what work is going on out there and you got to level up to it, which we should be. Yep. I also think the thing about social media is people come out with these new things that they think is new. And you're like, have you looked at the history of hair? Because yeah. wow, there are some incredible people that have done some incredible things that well, I don't think you realize <laughs> has actually already been done. Maybe Jacob. just a little tweak to some of this, but um, I think you got to give, you know, and that's the sad part for me is I think uh, we need to do a better job just as like us as keeping some of those names and some of those people as I would hope that some of them, you know, some of the future does with our names and, 
what we've brought to the industry, but um, the Sassoons, the Trevor Sorbys, the Lebettas, you know, the Chromines, the different people that have done wild stuff that made people thought provoke. And that for me is a disruption in a, in a great form that doesn't hurt anybody, but makes people think in a little different manner. And then you choose what you do with it, how commercially viable you want to do or how edge you want to do, but you have the choice. It's let's inspire people to do something different for a change, mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. You know, and hopefully that difference is make yourself happy. Yeah, that's, mm. that's the most important thing with hairdressing or life. Yeah. Make yourself happy and accept where you're at and uh, maybe not accept fully, but accept and adapt at least mm-hmm. to where you're at and overcome the whole Marine thing there. I think, um, I think people, uh, can, don't always know what they want or don't always know what's going to make them happy. And so they're r- running on aimlessly, not really knowing, mm-hmm. um, and not really, uh, finding like some people I hear them, they like even with social media, they post to try to find what people are going to like. And I'm like, Oh, what yeah. are you doing that for? Don't do that. Post mm. what you like. Mm-hmm. Like, don't try to, someone just yesterday told me that, uh, uh, and to each their own, but just told me they're trying to post to make people in the Midwest happy. And I'm like, that's cute. No, but I don't like make you happy. Yep. Like make you proud of you. That's the big thing that I'm into lately is making me proud of me. Um, today I just took my, uh, 11th month shower, cold showers i've no hot showers no lukewarm showers uh next month i'm one year into cold showers and every time i shower i make myself proud of myself oh man can we talk about this i'd love to okay so I, I, i'm a big believer in this right mm-hmm. and i went through this whole wim hof thing for like oh, a year right yeah, like yeah, right yeah. like like i did the retentions i did awesome. all that and like i thought it was I thought it was going to change my my life in a profound way, mm-hmm. and it did, but not the way that I thought it would, because it, it never works out that way, right? Yep. It never works never out that way. What you expect? Yeah, but exactly. with the retention, exactly. Yep. With the retention, and th- and I had to let go of that too, right? Uh-huh. Like uh, it's this isn't going to give me what I'm looking for, but it's going to give me something, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And so with the retentions and with the cold showers, my big takeaway was like oh, I'm getting comfortable being uncomfortable and this might be the first time in my life where I'm comfortable and I'm purposefully doing it. I'm yeah. putting myself in the way of harm, which isn't really harm. Nope. You know, nobody's died holding their Not breath and all. nobody's died uh, uh, in a cold shower. Mm-hmm. But um, but but it's, 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 it's getting in the way of harm and going like, you know, the Shocking rest of my day is easy. Exactly, exactly. You know? I've done the hard shit. Yep. You got your head up. You're very strong. You already know that you're kind of, uh, in my own head, I know I'm doing something that others wouldn't have the mental strength to do. Um, and that just makes me stronger feeling then too. Yeah. Um, I initially did it. I'm very heady. And I initially did it simply That's come up a couple times. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> I am a very heady person. And I initially did it simply because of the fact that uh, I had seen something knowing that skin is the largest organ that we have in our body and knowing about how if I put hot water on hair, that color goes out real quick. So that pores are open. So hot water on my skin, my pores are open. And in Las Vegas, the chemicals in the water mm. are intense. Mm. And so I got heady and I didn't want all that chemical in my body from that. So I was like, okay, I got to do cold showers. The thing I gained the most is the belief in myself that I didn't even know I was going to gain. I have a lot of plants in my house and uh, some of them are very large plants and I would soak them in plastic trays and then when I would lift the plastic trays up later to empty them, I'd always, because they're very flimsy, mm-hmm. I'd spill half the water on the way to the sink, and then I'd spill the other half, like, right as soon as I get to the sink, just about. <laughs> right. And I got annoyed by that, and about three months into the cold showers, I told myself before I was going to do it, I'm like, you know what, dude, today you're not going to spill it at all, you're going to calmly pick this thing up, you're going to calmly walk into the sink, you're going to calmly pour 100% of it into the sink. I did it no problem, and I've not spilled ever since. So it made me realize the belief I have in me now is so different. All, I mean, I wasn't, uh, as a lot of us didn't grow up in like the most uh, comfortable households at times. And a lot of the voices in my head from my youth always have been in my head. I'm so scared to fail here or mess up there or F up that or stupid this or dumb that, all the things. And I have so much more, like all of those voices are gone. Uh, I have just pure voice to, confidence in myself. I heard myself in Amsterdam the other day. I was helping my buddy. We were, he rented a boat, and we were going through the canals, and he was driving the boat, and I was helping the front. And when we got back to dock the boat, they were all worried. if I was, And I, I hear myself a lot. Oh, I got this, guys. I got this. I got this. And I'm like, so cool. Like, mm. I really, like, and I was hearing myself. I'm like, dude, this is so cool. You believe in yourself so much right now. Um, and I believe myself in the point to where and trying to put myself in uncomfortable positions the other day, I was really hungry and feeling hunger. I was like, you know what? Why have you not done a fast yet, bro? You need to do a fast. 
So I told myself just the other day, at the end of this month, I'm going to start a fast. So hopefully then I can line it up to where on the 3rd of July, when I have one year cold showers, I'll hopefully finish my seven or 10 day fast. So I have experienced that because there's, I'm really big into uh, trying to exercise my brain as much as I can and to maximize my, I mean, I intentionally had an addiction to drugs for like a year and a half to opiates. I let my friends know. I'm going to have an intentional addiction to this because I see no side effects. I want to see what this brings me. Um, if I get, if I turn off, if I go bad, please let me know. And I give you the, all the right to let me know. Um, they didn't see anything. I felt I experienced constipation for the first time. <laughs> and I was like, this is not fun to me at all. I thought constipation would be fine, but no, it was not a cool feeling. And I started thinking, I'm too vain. If it doesn't come out of there, it's going to come out of my skin. So <laughs> I decided to stop it basically, or slow down for a little while at least. And I'm, I'm no longer into any of those things today. But uh, like I had a good like... Oh, hold on, I want, I want to explore that a little sure, bit. Okay. So what was the... I, I, I guess I come back to that why. Like why would you like... Intend hey, I'm to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did it... Uh, uh, Full disclosure, basically, we're at a hair event, and uh, um, a friend's wife had had children, and so then they had some uh, um, lower tabs, and I took one and a half, I remember, and I was like, wow, I'm so talkative, I'm so, like, energy-filled, I just feel like super, I'm making myself laugh so much. <laughs> I think I'm the funniest guy in the yeah, world. Yeah, <laughs> I'm loving me right now. I was really sincerely loving myself at that moment, and I don't recall feeling like such a love for myself before that and i was like this is awesome and so fucking, then fucking dragon yeah <laughs> and so then uh, um i'm like okay i did that three days in a row and that was awesome so i'm like okay i'm just gonna try this and so i found some in vegas when i got home and did it and i mean it was superman in so many ways like very little negative side effects for me and i asked plenty of my clients that were into those kind of things what kind of side effects and then one of the my clients that took like 25 to 40 pills a day yeah, told me about <laughs> constipation being one of the things. And I'm like, I'm so regular. I wouldn't mind a little constipation in my life. And then I felt it and I was like, nope, I won't. I don't like this. And it still didn't stop me. It were basically, I had two like, passed out moments. I passed out twice from it. And that was, and the last one was uh, with Takashi and DJ. I wake up to them slapping me in my face. Like, bro. Wake up, wake up, wake up. And that was the week and then Michael Jackson had passed too. So that oh. was a big like eye opener to me. Like, mm. dude, chill out mm. so uh that's that stopped me and then how was how and that was it like did you you're like, I pretty much yeah i'm a cold turkey i'm a cold turkey kind of guy like i smoked cigarettes for like 25 years uh -huh. and i knew especially living in las vegas i was gonna have to stop everything to stop smoking cigarettes because you can just go to the bathroom and get one cigarette no problem <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what i mean you don't have to yeah. buy a whole pack and if you're a cigarette smoker right. you know that deal of not buying a pack <laughs> Um, and yet you could be smoking cigarettes for like a year, never buy a pack, those type of people. I didn't want to be that person. So I stopped, sm I'm a regular cannabis smoker. I stopped smoking weed. I stopped, uh, taking any kind of, any kind of mind altering things other than like caffeine. Mm -hmm. Caffeine was the only thing that I would allow in my system for like 10 months. Um, and then I felt like, okay, cool. Drinking is definitely the biggest gateway drug for me. So I thought, okay, cool. Now I can finally have a drink and I had a drink that first drink. I really wanted a cigarette, <laughs> um, but I made it through that first night, and uh -huh. then I never had any urge. I went to Coachella with during yeah, that, during that ten month period. Tough, I went to tough, Coachella yeah. and didn't do anything other than coffee and Red Bull. And wow. the year before, I did like everything you could think of, <laughs> like a lot. Of <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have a very I'm a very disciplined, a very I can be very off the rails, but I'm a very disciplined, very disciplined human overall. You're very disciplined off the rail guy. Yeah, yeah. It's a very interesting <laughs> yeah. concept, but yeah, I can be. Yeah, I'm, I'm terrified of opioids. Terrified. Yeah. But I'm, I, I, I want to be a junkie. Everything inside of me wants to be a junkie. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what I mean? And it's like, I, I'm like, uh, I know what to stay away from. It's yeah. like, you know, I had a realization a couple of years ago that like more than like wanting to be a junkie, like I want to take every opportunity to fuck up my life. You know, and like, and, and I've had to have like long, heady yeah, conversations sure. about like, why, why do I want to fuck my life up right here? Yeah. Like, like your life is so good. And then, but I think it comes down to, we're talking about value. I think it's like, what do I deserve? You know, what, mm. what, what, what kind of value it, do I have in my life? You know, and, and, and I know what I have and, and, and I love my life, but like the, imposter syndrome, it comes back to like, do I deserve this life? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I struggle with that. I mean, still to this day, like, like, like if you're being honest with me and I'm not saying that you're not, but like, 
I've never found a way to get past that. I've never gotten a way to get past like the imposter syndrome, even though like I've got to do some really cool shit in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, um, those conversations are still there. I'm, I have a much better conversation with that conversation. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it never leaves me. I mean, I could definitely snap into it in a second for sure. Mm-hmm. As it were there in my life for so long. Fortunately, it's just, it's not on my main screen anymore. Mm-hmm. It's, I've had to scroll and scroll and scroll like to find it now. Yeah. Um, where now the confidence analogy. in me and, and that's the thing I've just simply, again, through the music festivals, become comfortable with myself, um, knowing that, uh, I do everything with happiness, passion, and love. And all I'm trying to do is just make the world a better place around me. I love that. What okay. you do. Thank you, buddy. You do. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate for it. Sure. For sure. Um, I was blown away by watching you in Chicago because, um, I saw you, uh, was it the hairbrain teaching? teaching. Yep. It was the hairbrain teaching. Yeah. And, and I, I got to watch you there and I go, man, like just the way that you not just executed the haircut, but was, w- was able to explain it, which, which to me also is just a whole different level too. Thank like, you. like I'm not even a hair cutter, but I kind of like, I got it. Like you were talking about, you know, the noon sectioning um, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I go, okay, I get that. Yep. I get that. And it was such, such a great, I don't know. Is that a, is that your, or, mm-hmm. is that your wording? The yeah, nooning stuff? Is. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant because I got it. Like I got it, and and especially like to see the to to watch you do it visually, and then to say it, I go, oh, that makes total sense to me. So when I was uh, I had a hair care, I was a partner in a hair care line for like seven years, and so I had to deal with a lot of uh, distributor meetings and all this and that, and to talk to sales reps and distributors. Speak about imposter syndrome, exactly, and talk to them about my cutting method and watching them. And be like, oh my gosh, I think I can cut hair. Like I saw so <laughs> many. And that's, that's the good and bad of it, right? You're yeah. like, I'm so empowering and make this so easy that you're going to cut hair now too. And but, had all the salespeople doing it. I'm mm-hmm. sure you did. And that's the thing. Like, that's the first step. If you mm-hmm. believe you can. Yeah. It's like I did yeah. a video on Instagram where I put uh, a comb on my girlfriend's head and had her cross her legs and uncross her legs and cross her legs and Ooh. uncross her legs. And the comb didn't fall off. The comb just sat there. Everyone said, there's so many people that were like, um, it's uh, it's because she's got, she's a yoga girl. She's got a horrible back, honestly. And she's, she must be so yoga out and she's just this and that. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh. no, it's because if you believe the legs crossed are going to make it crooked, it's, it's probably going to cro- make it crooked. crooked. <laughs> That's message oh. of life. It's that simple. Like I don't, I know that crossing the legs is not going to make it crooked. I know crossing legs is going to make it hard to go up and down, not side to side. It's a whole different thing. Um, so, and I mean, I could literally do it with my phone with not touching anything. Here's my phone right here. Cross legs. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying there? I'm sorry, I got this, got this happened there, but. Oh, no. I hope you got oh, no. the visual there. Like, that exactly. was so good. So, <laughs> so <fucking> good. <laughs> it's such a goofy thing that I think so much of us just listen to what's been said. Correct. And just Correct. reiterate it. Uh, stay outside, think outside the box. I don't subscribe to thinking outside the box at all. I think the box is a very safe place. Correct. The box has a floor that's a consistent level that we don't need to worry about tripping ourselves on. The box has walls that gives boundaries. Boundaries are very important in every aspect of life. Boxes have roofs that protect you from the weather. I live in Las Vegas. If I didn't have a roof, I'd be a lot dark. It'd be awesome to be that dark, <laughs> but I'd probably have skin cancer. Um, so I strongly believe in staying thinking inside the box. I don't subscribe to time is money. I think that's a kind of a gross thought personally. Um, I think that uh, we all trigger warning. I think we all should have learned from George Floyd when he said, I can't breathe. He didn't say I can't make money. Breath, number one, most important thing we have. Breath gives us time. Time gives us the ability to laugh, to love, to dance, to do so many things long before money has anything to do with it. Money's so low on the totem pole. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you're focusing on money, you're, f- you're missing out on so many awesome, beautiful yeah. things in this earth, I think. Um, so to me, the mindset is such a massive thing on how you're just going to be one way or the other mm. and how you're going to accept things or push things away. Like, and I'm so not into huge. pushing things in a way at all. I accept, j- I try to be like water as much as possible. I learned whilst being on acid <laughs> one time <laughs> in the pool. <laughs> Sorry, but honestly, water is amazing, especially in a pool because it just hugs and loves every little bit of you and forms to you. It doesn't push you away as long as it's not a river or an ocean. Right. It doesn't push you away no matter what size you are, what color you are, what religion you are, what gender you are, so, uh, all the things. It just loves you. And that's my mentor to me in my brain to try to be to humans to just accept and love all of them like water does. That's very cool. 
That is very cool, bro. Thank you. That's very cool. <laughs> no, no, you I didn't. Said, no, you sorry. didn't. <laughs> 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 sorry, Tony. <laughs> that, was for, that, was for Tony. <laughs> that was for Tony, not for Ira. <laughs> it was for Ira, but I just wanted Tony to know that I can push yeah, the buttons yeah. and I know how to control this now, Tony. He, he, he just stepped up for you, bro. He just stepped up for you. Oh, my God. That's amazing, man. Thank you. I'm intrigued by you. I appreciate that. I, I'm an Literally. interesting dude. I mean, from the beginning, I was born February 29th. <laughs> oh, get out! Really? Yeah. Did you? There's, 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 so there's a, only six. Yeah. Only six. I'm, I'm, pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty tall for me. That's why I don't have short man complex. He's, he's only six. Oh, well, you're six five. Why would you have short man? I mean, man exactly. Complex? I'm certainly totally not six up. five. Almost the opposite of that. He's six years and old. Look what this guy's done. <laughs> <laughs> there's a um, woman in Guinness Book of World Record who had three kids and all born on February 29th, Whoa, that's all wicked. four years apart. Isn't that wild? Wow. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's a good story. Nonetheless. Yeah. Pretty impressive, if so. Hey, going back to your body, like I, to watch you work and to watch what you do and to say that you don't think outside the box. I don't know. Your box must be huge <laughs> because, because the stuff that you're producing and the stuff that you're putting out there isn't what I would consider inside the box. I think so many people are outside the box. We don't know what is inside the box. Expand. Do you know what I mean the box? I think, I think that uh, in some ways, I'm a very skeptical human being. Let me start with saying that. And mm -hmm. uh, I think some of the whole things of thinking outside of the box is to get us outside of our own brains. And it's not healthy. If the more we listen to outside things, the less we're listening to ourselves. This is a box. Mm -hmm. And uh, only I know what's best for me when it comes down to my feelings, my gut, and why I know what's going to be best for me at this moment and what's going to be best for me tomorrow. Only I can know that. No one else is going to tell me what that is. Um, and I think we're so trained to allow to listen to others and have them tell you what to do. Uh, and it's just not my comfort zone at all. And that's one of the reasons I told Chris I have such a hard time with mandatory dress codes <laughs> because I'm just even to that. Like I had one time when, uh, uh, when I was uh, still owner of the hair care company, I went and did a thing and someone complained about my, my outfit. And I was like, you're going to shame me? In my outfit, that's not uh, a very cool thing to do. Like, this is what makes me feel good. I don't know right. why you'd be shaming me in my outfit because I turned into the modern day usage of words there, basically, to mm -hmm. be like, that's not a cool thing to pick on me for my clothes. Like, this right. is what makes me feel good. What does that, my clothes have anything to do with the class I just shared with you? Like, or them. Or them. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> or them. Yeah, however it may be. Like, uh, I'm just, uh, I do have, and I understand, say, for the event, that yeah. you want to keep a clean thing, a certain thing, that that I re can respect and I can understand. But outside of that, to just simply complain about the way I was dressed, I mean, they thought I was too casual. I had shorts on with slides or Crocs, as yeah. I always do, and like a jersey. I had a jet, like a sports coat kind of thing. It was camo, but I had a sports coat kind of thing, but it was too casual for the Midwest for them. And they <laughs> felt that I should be more dressed up. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm just not that guy. Like... I didn't give you the same class as that guy either. Yep. So can't you appreciate the difference? Right. And I think that's becoming comfortable with you. Yeah. And that's why, it, like, I I mean, you've probably seen on his page, like, when he goes out and does his classes, the staff literally dresses up like Ira, which is really unbelievable. Cute. And I'm like, look at this. This is, And they just, they so embrace who he is because he's embraced who he is. And I think that's also what resonates out. And I we need more people like that that are comfortable in their own skin. Um, that's why I say I think authenticity, I think transparency, I think that human connection is so huge. And that's for me, relationships are so important and how you treat people, um, how you resonate that out into the world. And sometimes you got to do it before other people do it. You know, you can't wait and go, oh, I want respect. You got to give respect. You got to give humility. You got to give um, before you're going to get, in my opinion. And I think that, the people that have done really well with that um, have done personal growth. You know, that's a huge thing. And what we do, especially being artists is I think you always got to look, you always got to be happy with what you see at the end of the day. And if not, you got to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's super important. And um, you can hear that in, in, you know, his story and, and what he's talking about is those transitions and those tr growth developments um, I think are huge. And I think, the idea that we can talk about that openly is, is also a big thing. Cause I think for a long time it was don't it sh sure. like, sh yep. you know, yeah. all kinds of people do all kinds of things. Correct. I'm not, there's nothing that I do that I'm ashamed about. There's nothing I do that's in secret. I don't, I'm such a, 
I'm such a glass bowl with no corners. I'm so transparent overall. It's uncomfortable for me to even try to keep a secret. Um, I get that. It's just that's got me in trouble too. Yeah, I'm a terrible liar as well. Like yeah. you can tell, definitely if I'm like yeah. bullshit, you know, yeah. <laughs> which I don't really bullshit. Yeah, and the only reason I would try to keep quick. a secret is if it's someone else's information. Right. Exactly. exactly. Then I can keep quiet. But no, no, I'm just, with you. Yeah, I'm with you. If it's my own stuff, I'm not bothered. Like I have uh. nothing that I do that I'm ashamed about. Why would I do something that I'm ashamed about? To me, it makes no sense because right. I still have to live with me. Um, so I don't do things that make me. I don't do things in the dark. Or do things like secretively. It's not, uh, um, I had a couple years ago where um, I was in a situation and I was thinking about being the past me a little bit. I was not always the best boyfriend in my past life. And uh, um, I was uh, an opportunist a lot. And uh, I had, I could feel that there was an opportunity in front of me. And I started thinking about things. And uh, I was like, you know what? I started thinking about it all through. And I was like, you know what? You're not going to do this because you don't want to be a butt guy. I don't want anyone to say, I a really nice guy, but, but, and I, I'm very comfortable to say today. I'm positive. There's nothing that someone could say a butt thing. I mean, maybe he's late sometimes. Um, <laughs> hey, he made it back from Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah. That'd be I was fun. proud of him for that. I mean, you know, so thing. I should have known he was going to be in the, he was yeah. ready. He was here. He's, he's on. He's ready. Yeah. I saw him in the back it's, room. He's coming. I he's ready. I can't think of too many negative things. Oh that uh, people could really put on me with intention. I'm a very intentional person to make sure that I want just to be very comfortable, f- little waves around me, nothing aggressive, no, no tides, nothing like that, um, and try to just keep a consistent pace. And that's the one thing that uh, was a, quite a compliment to me coming from Sam. I've known Sam Vila since I was 18, 19, and uh, when we got to see each other in premiere in uh, um, California there, it was such a great compliment from him saying how proud he is of me seeing my growth. And he said that uh, he feels that it's because of my consistency of being me as per why I'm in this place that I'm in today. And uh, it was such a great compliment to me uh, because that's the thing that uh, even though I had an imposter thing for so long, mm-hmm. I still, I always modestly saying I always like myself, but I was concerned with not being the technically sound hair cutter that I wanted to be. Right. So it wasn't anything against me. It was more that, you know, cutting hair next to DJ can be very intimidating. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Very, intimidating. <laughs> He's very, very good. Bring a seatbelt um, and know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> right? um, and, uh, and so, and I remember You ever feel like past, he's peering at you? Yeah. And I can remember in the past, like I could feel like heat build up and I could feel my own voice inside. And, uh, you know, and to have that turnaround to a couple years later, then have Tracy ask me to cut in a room with her. And she did like four haircuts and I did one haircut because I enjoyed it. Mm. I was like, I took for like three and a half, four hours to cut it. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun mm. to cut next to Tracy and feel confident to not feel afraid to feel like I deserve to be next to Tracy cutting mm. hair. Um, it was a, a very big moment for me. Um, and I'm such a, uh, emotional type of human being in that direction that I feel those things and, and uh, uh, go through the whole thought in my head. I'm like, this is awesome, dude. You finally are getting to a better place. You're finally growing up and becoming an adult in this game. Um, I think kids are awesome and I love being, I am a child in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, we've seen your Crocs. Thank you. I was hoping you were going to say my Crocs. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but <laughs> that doesn't R in that word. Yeah, exactly. I was like, dang, bro. <laughs> it's a uh, full size R. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway, um, but uh, um, made in the Philippines. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, no shame in my game. But uh, uh, yeah, it's just one of those things that. Uh, just becoming comfortable with yourself just makes it so much easier. Like now I enjoy me. And funny enough, I had a time a couple, like maybe a year or so ago. I remember I had went outside. I was by myself at a hotel at a show or not a show, like a class. And uh, at the hotel by myself, went out, did my smoking, came back in. And some reason I opened up my reels and I spent like 25, 30 minutes watching my reels. I started crying. because so I was like, dude, if I didn't know me, I would love me. I'd be like, oh, I got to follow this guy. I want to meet that guy. And it was like such a moment for me of like, like realizing and having like an outer look of things. I'm like, oh, this is so cool, dude. Like, you're a pretty good guy. And especially then knowing like all the things that I do to try to evolve myself to get stronger and be a better human. Um, I 
I have a lot of love for me nowadays. And it's a big thing that I, I beg of people find ways to make themselves proud of themselves. Do at least one thing every day that makes you proud of you. Write it down, journal it. After 30 days of doing that, read it all. You will be a changed person. You will not be the same person that you felt like you were before. You're going to love and appreciate and respect yourself so much more. And respecting yourself is huge. I've, I'm so sensitive to this nowadays. In Amsterdam there, there was a, uh, one of the, our friend's wife's got... Uh, uh, she wasn't well for different things, and I was offering to try to help her with different things, and she just kept turning it down. And I was like, oh, my gosh, she needs to love herself. This poor girl, she doesn't love herself. Like I'm, asking, I'm asking to help her, and she's not accepting because she just doesn't feel she's worthy of it somehow. I could mm -hmm. tell. There's a deep-rooted she doesn't feel she's worthy. And that's a sad, sad thing to see in some human when you can tell that they are of mind that they're not worthy. It's a tough thing. That's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, um, as we wrap these things up, I'm going to tell you that I'm stealing one of your mantras as my own. And that's like, I don't want to be the butt guy. It's awesome. I love you it. Know, I, like, you. I like that um, very, very much. Um, for me, it's uh, like, this just happened to me a couple months ago and I had to, and I had to process it a little bit, but you know, someone's like, dude, you're just being phony or you're being fake or whatever. And I kind of had to process that. And like, although like, I wasn't like, I wasn't hurt by it necessarily, but I had to process through it. And, and, and I go like, and what I came to is that, you know, my goal in life is to always seek peace, mm -hmm. you know, whatever situation that I'm in, I'm, I'm seeking peace. And, and, and if that makes me phony, first off, I've never been called fake or phony from somebody who wasn't angry <laughs> as a first thing, but, but, but in my process of, uh, of seeking peace, if that's how I come across, I'm okay with that. Of course. You know? That's their issue, not yours. Exactly, exactly. I mean, that's kind of, but but I still, you still have to process that shit. Which is, by the way, half the reasons why I don't read the comments on our posts and stuff like that because I don't know, you know, I don't know what, what's ugly, and and I, and I don't want to put that there. Like again, in my in my process of seeking peace, like I don't want to put ugly about what I'm doing or who I am or not who I am because nobody knows that. But um, <laughs> but what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like I don't want to. I, I don't even want to expose myself to that in a weird way. You know, I guess, I guess the ostrich with the head in the sand <laughs> is mm -hmm. my approach to life. But again, my my only goal is to seek peace. You know, peace is great. Ira and Chris, first off, thank you very much for uh, for once again bringing a bringing a legend onto our onto the podcast. Uh, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, Chris, more oh, than you know. You, you know, I appreciate you, Chris, you too. Thank you. Yeah, for real. You and and for for the stuff that you're doing for the industry, you know, the the who else brings 40 fucking studs up with them, you know, like, <laughs> like it, it, it's amazing, you know, and, and to be in a position, it's very cool, Chris, because to be in a position to where like, I'm just going to host this thing and let you guys be fucking awesome is amazing, you know, and that's and talk about like moving the ego aside. It's quite a f awesome flex. When it yeah. Comes down oh, to you it. know, it's yeah, that's awesome how you, you nailed it. Yeah. It's you nailed an awesome it. flex. You know, and that. Flex has to come with comfort of mind. If you don't have comfort of mind, you have to go up there and show everything to flex that way. The, when I saw him not go up there, I gained so much respect because I'm like, okay, I see what this guy's about. It's not about the him thing whatsoever. Mm -mm. Like, otherwise he'd be up there. Um, so to me, that was an amazing thing to see and that what made me even more like into doing things with you guys because I see I what the leader that, is like. Yeah. I'm a strong believer, attitudes, the reflection of leadership. That's true. And uh, uh, that means that's a, a good leader right there. That's awesome. That, dude. That's awesome. One day, one day when I'm not doing podcasts, I'm just going to go sit in the back room and watch you guys work. Uh, it's yeah. amazing how many people come in the back room. <laughs> 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 cool. Somehow they always find the CBC back room and they're like, why is it always so chill over here? <laughs> What's the only one that's worthy to go to, Chris? Oh, man. There's, been, there's, there's great stuff going on. I just think we try and keep a cool vibe and try and just keep a great Love energy it. and – do it, do it uh, the way we'd want to be done to us. And I think be a leader in the industry first and have uh, no expectation of what you expect back. Just be the, be the person you are. All right. Shameless plug. I'll, I'll plug it, Chris. Like if you're ever at a hair show and, and you see CBC there, you absolutely positively must go. You, you, you they, they're going to take you to church. You must be witness to the church, man. <laughs> You've got to see it. Um, it's an experience like like none other. Um, nobody else in the industry is doing the stuff that Chris is doing. Nobody else is doing it in the industry um, with the people that Chris is doing it to. You know, uh, you know. Again, it's not. It's not. There's brands involved, but it's not brand based. So, so you're seeing you're seeing the raw. You're seeing the dog. You know, and it, it, it's a very very cool experience. Whatever Chris is up to. You're uh, very kind, bro. 
Well, dude, you know, very true. We're always there, man. You know, uh, we're 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 always there to watch and, and to witness. Um, Ira, dude, thank you so much. I, 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 you. I hope we can hug it out, and and, and I, I hope that. to see you at a lot more hair shows because this is where we get to see our friends. So exactly. I appreciate you spending your time with us and, 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 and uh, you know coming down from Amsterdam and <laughs> you know other stuff. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You can celebrate that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ira, thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends. Give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.